Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and before I start on today's video, I wanted to bring up a new class that I just launched. In the world around us, there's a hunger for hope. There's a hunger for God that only He can answer. But there's also tangible, earthly hunger for the basics of life like food. I'm hoping that we as a Bible journaling community can join in an effort to address the food needs that we're facing with this new fundraiser class called Hunger for Hope. The class is comprised of all of my Advent series videos from the past several years. So the content is already public, except for this year's of course, which are already in the class and available. If you want to see them early, that's how but they will become public here on YouTube every Sunday of Advent, as always. But why pay for a class when the content is free? Well, because that's how I know to gather funds through my teaching site, not just during Advent, but all year long, to give to the hungry and serve them as Jesus called us to do. In the class, you'll have several videos on the four topics, hope, peace, joy, and love, with different verses for each, and every year, I'm going to add my Advent series to it on the first Sunday of Advent. So the class content will grow year after year, and you continue to have access to it. The themes, techniques, and ideas in the class can be adapted for seasons other than Advent. So I do hope the resources are going to be a blessing to you, even as we are a blessing to hungry families in our communities. The charities that we donate to will change throughout the coming years as needs change, and I'll be reporting donations and fundraising efforts in our Bible Journaling Made Simple Facebook group. Please see the links in the description for both the class and the Facebook group if you're interested in either one. The third Sunday of Advent has a theme of joy. And if you didn't know there were themes for every Sunday of Advent, you can Google that. And joy is the theme for this week. I have selected a verse from Luke 15. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. And as we prepare our hearts for Christmas, repentance and bringing joy to our Father is a great way to spend these weeks before Christmas. This Tomo River paper that I'll be using is Bible-like paper. It's very thin, as you can see, comes in sheets that you can trim down or at least make a box around to figure out the size of your layout for your Bible. So it's flexible in that way. And I'm going to be tracing my little drawing of the word joy and a telescope for it. And I do have one other thing that gets added to the sketch that you'll be able to download in the link that's below the video that is a star up in the right-hand side. It did not appear in this first sketch. But I'm tracing it using a mechanical pencil. It's not one that you need to have. A regular number two pencil will work just fine. And the light box is one that you could ask for Santa Claus to send you for Christmas if you're looking for a gift someone needs to get for you. It's a nice one to have. But you can also just tape the artwork to a glass window or a glass sliding door and trace the artwork quite easily. And the paper is kind of see-through, not completely, but you can trace it without actually having to use light behind it as well. The word joy, I decided I was going to start by putting some blues and purples in it because I had this idea in my head to make the word look like it's recessed into the paper, that it's lower than the paper or that basically the white paper is a mask on top of it, but I wanted it to look like a starry sky. So I began by putting these blues and purples with my colored pencils down first and that lays the basis for all the colors that go on top. I love to layer colored pencil. Just don't press super hard with it until you're ready to really affirm that line. When adding the really dark indigo color, I'm gonna put the shadows on the right hand side. And what I'm picturing in my mind when I'm doing this is that there's a, a light coming from that upper right hand side from up where the star is perhaps and shining down on things so that there's gonna be a shadow on that top edge. 
you see how it kind of pushes it, makes it look like it's recessed or debossed is what it's called in the printing industry. And then adding the same indigo blue across all of it, but you still see the brighter blue and the brighter purple coming through the pencil because I'm not pressing super hard with the dark pencil. But it's going to give me kind of a muted multicolor sky without being just garish colors because I'm going to put a lot of white stars on top so I wanted some of the color to show through but not be too much and to have it feel like a rich dark night sky as well. If I were to try to put stars on it before putting all this dark blue down the stars would not show up as much because the white pen, pen is going to show up much more on top of dark color than on top of light color. Now remember with white pens, you're also going to get some show through and whatever the color is down below sometimes gets picked up by the paint or the ink in the white pen. So the stars over time could start to soak in some of that color. The colors that do that the most are reds. So the blues aren't going to do it as much, but even if they do, any blue color seeping into the white ink is just going to make them into blue stars, which would be still beautiful and look like a night sky nonetheless. So continuing around for each one of these sections, just putting the shadow on the right hand side and around the bottoms of each one of the shapes so that that light cast is coming from that upper right hand kind of side. And even if it did not look dimensional like this, it still is beautiful. It's going to look like night sky in there when all the stars are done. And don't worry about whether or not you add a shadow onto it in that kind of a way. I'm going to color up the little graphic shape that I created for the telescope by putting a little bit of light gray down. And then I decided, no, I needed a darker gray to make it look like I don't know, a heavier shape rather than just this more pale kind of color. And I, you could join those parts of it and make it, you know, one individual image, you know, connect all the, the empty spaces in between. But I wanted something that felt more graphic because the way that I wrote the joy, which I did those, I explained in my previous videos during this Advent season that I just sat there with pen after pen after pen writing in different ways, the the four words, I almost said the three words, the four words for the four Sundays of Advent, and then picked one that worked, pick, picked one that I thought I could uh, do something with. And this one was kind of thick and chunky, the way that the, the pen wrote it. And when I adapted it and colored it and scanned it and, you know, redrew it and all that kind of stuff to try to get it the way I wanted, it felt very chunky, and that's where I decided to make a sort of graphical representation of a telescope rather than making one that looks hyper-realistic, that sort of thing. So I'm just adding some shadows at the bottom part and the lighter gray toward the top part and colored in the base, leaving a little bit of a highlight on the side that faces that star. And I was trying to decide whether or not I would make the star like a bright yellow color or something and, and do it in warm colors. And then I decided, no, I just wanted to have it be the same as the rest. It At this point, introducing all those warm colors just felt wrong. It didn't feel like it fit with everything. So I put more of the sky in there. Again, adding the darker shadow on the right-hand side so it looks a little more inset, a little more debossed into the paper. And did the same layering of colors, the blues and the purples and that kind of thing over top of each other. And then comes the fun of the white pen. I made some of the stars making basically a little plus to create a, a star with a little sparkle coming out from it. And then lots that was just going to be dots because that is what most of the sky looks like. And then just having the occasional twinkle of one of those little plus signs to make it feel more starry. And as I said, some of the color in this may seep the, the, the blue and the purple color may seep through some of those white dots over time. I'm not worried about that because I think it's still going to be perfectly beautiful. I put the glue down here inside the, the crack of the Bible 
so that I could glue my page in there. And then I had added too much. So I took a pair of scissors not to cut anything, but just to break the place where I had sort of over glued it and then tried to press it back together and then make sure I pulled it apart enough and then let it dry open so that all of my extra glue did not create more of a problem for myself. And I did highlight the verse in colored pencil, which is a blue coordinated with the verse that I decided to do here. Lots of room on these pages, by the way, for personal journaling, which I'm going to add throughout the Advent season. Since the artwork is done, I will be able to do the journaling portion later on. Thank you so much for joining me for this. If you're interested in that class or the Facebook group or anything, the downloadable for this piece of art, it's all linked below the video. And I'll see you again next week.